You're listening to Spaz on Wine, uncorked, with host Rhonda Spaziani on GreenInkRadio.com. Are you la la listening? He's tripping in the words that came out of her mouth. Are la la listening? Hi, this is Rhonda, and today I want to talk to you about decanting wine. Can't decant? I think you can. Lately, I've been really obsessed about decanting wines. We've always had an aerator, both an electronic and a little horse, one you put in the bottle at our house. But lately, I've been reading a lot and thinking a lot about that. Why aren't we decanting? My husband and I spend a lot of money on wine, and we've bought the Rito glasses that really do change. I'm going to do another episode on glasses, just an FYI, but they, the glass itself really does impact the taste of the wine. So what about a decanter? Will that really change the taste of the wine, I questioned? So here's what I learned. I learned that decanting wine really does have a positive impact. You can decant almost every wine there is. Go figure. I didn't realize you could decant champagne and white wine too, but I did a ton of research and it seems like even white wines benefit from decanting. So do you decant for how long all wines? Are they the same or are there different times? There are different times. And it's quite a bit different depending on the grape varietal and if it's white or red and even champagne. Believe it or not, some wine experts even put wine in a blender for aeration. I don't know. Wine's a living thing. I don't think I would put a living thing ever in a blender. Just not for me. So the question is, why would you decant a wine? So there's two main reasons why people decant wines. One is to aerate it and decrease its exposure to oxygen, its surface to oxygen, and soften a tight wine out. And the second one is to remove sediment. And back in the day, when you see all those old movies where they were all decanting into crystal glasses, there was a lot more sediment in wine, and now with super filtration methods, there's not as much sediment in wine, but there still is some. And particularly if you drink a wine that's over 10 years old, a red wine that's over 10 years old, there will be more sediment, and you'll want to um, decant to decrease the amount of sediment in your bottle because no one wants some funky, chewy thing in their bottle. Plus, red wine sediment can actually stay in your teeth, so you want to get rid of it. So a trick when you're decanting your wine to get rid of sediment or take the solids away from the liquid is that you want to pour very slowly. There are special decanters that are smaller mouthed decanters, particularly for sediment removal, but you can use any decanter, a wide mouth decanter too. But you want to pour really slowly and use a light source, either your phone or a candle or a flashlight, just under the shoulder of the bottle where it moves into the neck, and just watch as you pour slowly and carefully when you start seeing what they call either smoke or shadow or just sludge start moving into the neck, and then you want to stop. Now, I believe that you can take, and that's usually about three-quarters of a glass or so, or depending, if you've kept the bottle upright, that's another tip I should tell you. When If you store your wine horizontally or if you moved the wine recently, ideally you'd want to give it two days st standing vertically. But a lot of times we don't. We just have you know a little bit of time before we're going to serve the wine. So you always want to put the wine bottle up vertically for as long as possible before decanting. But if you have that la little last glass of like that's all kind of sedimenty on the bottom, some people say throw that in you know a soup or a gravy. But you can also you could probably use a coffee filter and just pour it over a glass and get that little bit of liquid or there are stainless steel strainers which are much better suited and wouldn't pick up any taste from the paper that you could pour into the glass so you don't waste that little bit of wine and the second major reason why you'd want to decant wine is to aerate especially young wines or really tannic wines you want to aerate them because sometimes they can present very tight or closed on the palate or the nose, and this will the aeration lets the wine take in oxygen, which opens up flavors and aromas. Highly tannic wines are best suited for a night, and really full-bodied wines are best suited for a nice decanting. One particularly helpful hint is you don't want to over-decant because it can kind of boomerang back. 
anything over than a couple hours and you could actually end up with kind of a vinegar smell or deadened ar- aromatics on your wine and you don't want that. So kind of follow this general guideline. But the number one thing to do before you decant is always taste your wine. It's If it's amazing right out of the bottle, because the bottle has very little exposure, the neck is very narrow to oxygen, which helps aerate it and soften it out. But if that wine is amazing just (laughs) right away, then drink it. But if you want to really enhance the wine, take a sip as your control and then pour it into your decanter. Wait a half an hour, test it again, see if it's opened up, the aromatics are flourished. If not, wait a little longer, but you don't want to overdo it. There's a whole slew of different decanters, and I'm going to talk about those in just a minute. But if you have a decanter that you can put a seal it, if it has a cap, you can keep the wine for a day or two. But otherwise, you got to drink it within 12 hours or it's going to just really deaden out. So with white wines and champagne, you really don't want to let them decant for too long. And even Pinot Noir, it's only like a half an hour. But with white wines... You want to, sometimes you want to do it for a couple different reasons. Even Chardonnay for like more sophisticated whites, more delicate, aromatic whites. Again, do the taste test. If it's fabulous, don't decant. But if you feel like a little funk, a little sulfur on the nose, kind of rottenly smell, a little rubber or, or sulfur match, you're going to want to open that up and pour that into a decanter, but no longer than a half an hour. But some of the other reasons why you might want to decant white wines is one, to either bring the temperature up. A lot of time in our refrigerators, it's way too cold and it makes the wine all shriveled up and tight. Um, and it allows it to open up and flourish. I'm really famous for doing this because I like my white wine really cold. So I know, I know that's not the best way, but man, I like it. And then the other way is if your wine is too warm, your white wine, you can put your decanter right in an ice bath in a bowl or in your sink, and it'll quickly, because the surface is much larger, cool that wine right down. You particularly want to decant any of the wines that have screw caps because that creates some sulfur compounds that can give you some funk on the nose. So you definitely want to do, decant those. But again, not for very long. 20, 30 minutes should do the job. And the Grand Puba of white wines, champagne, that can be decanted too. But personally, I like that effervescent mousse of champagne. I like the sparkles. But they say you can do it. If you want to decrease that a little bit, if that kind of freaks you out a little bit and you don't like that much sparkles, and they also recommend, the wine experts, that if you have a sophisticated older champagne, that you can really even enhance its delicate aromas and taste by decanting it a little bit. So here's the general rule of thumb about how long you decant wines. But again, always do the control. I say if it, feel, it tastes great out of, the, out of the block, go for it, drink it. But... 30 minutes is usually Zinfandel, which I was surprised. I thought Zinfandel would require a little bit more. White wines, champagnes, and Pinot Noir. If your wine, if your red wine is over 20 years, you don't want to drink an over 20-year-old white wine. But if your red wine is over 20 years, you're just going to do it for sediment removal. You're not going to aerate. You're just going to pour it very delicately in, get rid of the sediment, and then serve immediately. But since most of us drink our wines between 2 and 10 years old, my husband and I said, we need a bottle for uh, decanter for sediment. He said, we don't have any wines old enough for that, which is so true. But so most of us do drink our wines between 2 and 10 years old. And here's the general rule of thumb for that age category. So 30 minutes for Zinfandel, Pinot Noir, Whites, and Champagne. One hour for Malbec, Grenache, and Garnacha blends. Two hours for Cabernet Sauvignon. Syrah, Shiraz, Merlot, Petite Syrah, Tempranillo, Sangiovese, and Ports and Madeira. And three hours in it for Nebbiolo. Oh, I can't wait to drink a Nebbiolo. However, wines that are in that over 10 year plus, and that's only reds you're going to be dealing with, um, age category, they will throw a sediment. So you will want to aerate and, you know, reduce it and clean it up by reducing the, sem- the sediment, by pouring off the sediment. However, there is a note. Don't use aerators ever on a really aged, delicate wine. Now, as far as the vessels that you can use or the decanters that you can use, I recommend just starting out with a $30 glass decanter, wide mouth decanter, wide-based. It'll The wide mouth 
helps increase its exposure to oxygen, you can pour off sediment in there too if you're careful. So I would say start off with that. But you can use anything. You can even aerate wine in your glass. That's why you see a lot of wine aficionados and experts swirling their wine around in their glass. It's to release its aromas and to open the wine up. So you can do that. You could even use a mason jar or an old vase. But just make sure you wash it well. And also make sure you rinse it, more importantly, really, really well because you don't want any soap flavors enhancing your wine. But decanters can be hand-blown. They can be crystal. They can range from $30 to $200, $300 to in the thousands. But why spend that? I mean, if you have that money, sure, go for it. But you want a note, please don't go buy a decanter, an aged decanter, or if you have an inherited decanter that you don't know it's vintage and it may be before, like, 1970, just use that for display. Do not use that to pour your wine in because it could have lead, and that can give you lead poisoning. So you definitely, that does not enhance the wine in any way, shape, or form. So in conclusion, I encourage you to go out and buy an inexpensive glass decanter to start. Why not? It can only help your wine experience. Thank you for listening to Spaz on Wine Uncorked on Green Ink Radio, which is an experience for the curious mind hosted by a collective of imperfect gurus and sponsored by Green Ink Marketing. And please tune in to our next episode on Spaz on Wine, where every mouthful is mindful. Music provided by Immunuri. Check them out at imunuri.com. Thank you for listening to Spaz on Wine Uncorked. Tune into the other great shows available on greeninkradio.com. An experience for the curious mind. Are you not listening? Are you not-